from our rivers and streams, all our waters, lakes, ponds, gravel pits, reservoirs are bracketed together under the heading of still waters. Problem is, they're seldom if ever still. You only need the lightest bit of wind and the water gets on the move. I'm here today with Alan Scott Horn. We're fishing a little lake that's no more than two acres. And in spite of that, the water is moving slightly. Alan's fishing a waggler's at about 20 metres or something like that. Um, and he's having to sink the line. Um, if you don't sink the line, it will be pulled around and drift all over the place, won't it, Alan? Yeah, it's, uh, if I can just wind this float in. I'm just fishing a, a basic straight waggler setup right. with a, a 13 foot acolyte rod and a 4,000 reel. Just okay. a, a basic, what I call rig for fishing, just a nice distance from the bank. Right, loaded crystal waggler. Knocking it out there, you've got it stopped between float stops or gripper stops or something? Yeah, just three gripper stops, two below, one above, and it's a fully loaded float. I've loaded the float up so it's it's right. set when it hits the water. OK. The key thing is, when Alan's rig lands, he wants to sink the rig very, the line very quickly from rod top right the way through to the float. The float itself, being quite long, will take a portion of the line under and when he buries his rod top down in front of him, that'll take a portion of the line under. The key thing then is this little flick, this strike upwards, which will sink all the line the whole way between the float. Can you go through the motions, Al, yeah. and show us the process? Once you've cast out, I'm just casting out up to a clip that straightens the rig out. Okay. Now, what, one thing where I always do, I allow the line, instead of keeping it straight, I allow a tiny little bit of bow in the line. So then once you put the rod under the water, because you've got a bow in the line, the line sinks very easily. Right. E easier than if it's dead straight? Yeah. I'll, OK. If, if your line is absolutely dead straight, right, you've really got to flick the rod. I'll just... that. I've got the line almost as straight as I can get it now. Right. To sink that, you can okay, see... OK, yeah. It, I've had to do it twice to get it down. Okay. Right. So the, a little trick, just when it's when it's calm like this, but you've got like a bit of skimming wind. That little bit of a wind that you've got, if you just allow when the floats to it, you can see the lines now slightly bowed right. to the floor. Well, you dropped your rod top to the left, almost inducing that little bow, yeah, didn't you? Yeah, just a little bit. And then it's much easier to sink the line. Okay. Now, if you've bowed, if you've bowed that round to the left in an arc, are you striking slightly to the right to take it under? Uh, no, you can just more straight or less, up. Yeah, just straight up. It's okay. just just if the line's dead straight, it's harder to get under the water. If you can just allow that little bit of bow, and you've always got some wind either okay. from one side or the other, just that tiny little bit of bow just helps to sink it. It's a case of put the rod top in, a quick flick, and that drops the line under the surface. De dead simple. Thank you very much. Didn't know that. Fishing for 60 odd years um, and missed that one. So now I've added to my repertoire of tricks. The key thing is if you don't sink the line, the slightest bit of drift will drag your bait into the nearest bit of deb debris on the bottom. So you need to Get your line out there fairly straight, a little bit of curve, as Alan said, strike it under and it will stay put where it is and avoid all the surface skim.